Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Lately I've been reading this book, White People, Indians, and Highlanders by Colin Calloway. I thought it would be interesting to do a video about the Highland experience in North America. But every time I started writing that video, I would get sidetracked into the topic of Scottish history, of course, and start talking about things like Culloden. And now, every time I started to talk about Culloden, I would think, well, we also have to talk about Bannockburn. So then, as I started to talk about Bannockburn, I thought, well, we're going to have to talk about Edward I. And as I began to write about Edward I, I realized we'd have to write about Alexander III and the original foundings of the Scottish Kingdom. And then I realized if you talk about that, you're going to have to talk about the Vikings. So, here we are now. I'm going to make a video going all the way back to the very beginning. This is a video about Scotland in prehistory. People have lived in Scotland for at least 8,500 years before Britain's recorded history. Recorded history of Scotland begins with the Roman Empire in the first century. The so-called oldest house in Britain is the oval structure of wooden posts that was found at South Queensferry near the Firth of Forth, which dates from the Mes Mesolithic period sometime around 8,240 BCE. This makes it almost 10,000 years old. Uh, so in 2011, a construction company uh, unearthed this archaeological site as part of the investigations uh, that, that are taken in preparation uh, for construction in the UK. In particular, they were building what's called the Queen, Queen's Ferry Crossing Bridge, which is uh, apparently also the tallest bridge in the UK. So while they were building this, they revealed two locations uh, of major archaeological activity. One is in a place called Castland Hill, which is towards the north, and another is in Eckline Fields towards the south. So we're going to focus on the, the, the uh, southern field here. That's where the house was discovered. The excavation of these sites focuses on the Mesolithic habitation in Scotland, a period which dates from 12,000 to 6,000 years ago. So in 2012, they actually dug these sites. Um, the study was called the results of an archeological excavation at Eckline Field, South Queensferry. They had four actual digs. At the study itself, it says the majority of the excavated remains relate to the Mesolithic occupation of the site. The most significant find being of a sunken floored structure it measured 6.96 meters by 5.92 meters with a west-facing entrance. They found nine post holes forming an oval. So that's the the uh, post holes are where the wooden wooden trunks would have been that held up the structure itself. Uh, <clears throat> and then they also found one inner post hole, which may have also held up the structure or maybe held up something internally. They also found evidence of a cobbled surface, so a cobbled floor possibly, um, and also, of course, a hearth and many pits, so pits are used for storage or garbage or things like that. They also found a second Mesolithic structure uh, that was also comprised of oval-shaped posts, uh, and they found a hearth in that one as well. In addition to that, they found uh, what's called Neolithic grooved ware. So this is a type of pottery from the later Neolithic period. Uh, and they found associated with that a structure consisting of a series of intercutting curvilinear ditches. So that's um, when they have those kind of big round uh, concentric ditches, one after the other in a big kind of large C shape. In addition to that, they also found uh, 12th and 13th century structures, so uh, this particular site had buildings on it all the way from the Mesolithic to the uh, to the 1200s. It was reported that more than 1,000 flint artifacts were found, which included materials which would have been used as tools and arrowheads, uh, especially they found lots of knives. Other discoveries included large quantities of charred hazelnut shells, indicating that nuts would have been an important source of food for the hunter-gatherer occupants of the house. Uh, you know, 
hazelnut. Everyone loves that Nutella. Um, but this uh, did tell archaeologists, this is evidence that archaeologists point to to say that this was kind of a seasonal place. So they often find things like this, large collections of nuts in places where people are gathering nuts to prepare for the winter. Um, this isn't just in Scotland. This, this happens lots of places. So this uh, may have been a place that they just came to sit out the winter or maybe they just came to collect the nuts. This, it looks like it wasn't a 100% permanent set settlement, even though it was a, maybe a permanent building. So in, on that note, the site would, would bear similarities to other Mesolithic sites uh, in the area of the 4th. Uh, in 2001, a settlement was found in Cranog near Edinburgh, uh, which is also which is, uh, on the confluence of the River Forth and the River Amund. This was dated to around 8,500 BCE, so uh, just a little bit younger than this site here um, that we're talking about. And in fact, at the time when it was discovered, it was the oldest site, and this new site has since um, taken, that, taken that torch. So that was the oldest house to be found, or oldest dwelling, I guess, um, if you want to be technical about it. But there have been a few finds that have dated even earlier. Uh, these would be objects, not actual structures. The oldest I could find reference to is in Islay. Uh, this is a flint arrowhead that was found in a field near Brigand. This object is supposedly related to the end of the Alarod, which was a relatively warm period from 12,000 to 11,000 BCE. This is the only find in Scotland to, to date from this early part of the Mesolithic, uh, and it is dated to around 10,800 BCE. So a good 2,000 years older even than the two, uh, the structure that we had just, just been talking about. So now back to that site at Cramond. Uh, this site was the remains also of a temporary camp, um, a little bit more less substantial than the the other the other temporary camp that we were just speaking about. Um, they could only find they didn't find any post holes here. They found evidence of stakes, so uh, things kind of holding down like a tarp, I guess, kind of object maybe skins, um, obviously nothing extremely permanent. But they did find more than 3,000 artifacts, uh, which included 300 finished stone tools. The inhabitants of the Mesolithic camp were, neo were nomadic hunter-gatherers who moved around their territories according to the season of the year. They did find a number of waste pits along with the stake holes, uh, and they believe that there were uh, some shelters as well as windbreaks. Also found here large numbers of hazelnut shells. So, and the hazelnut shells are how they dated this site. They were able to carbon date it from those shells. There was also a number of oyster and mussel shells as there's oyster and mussel beds in the area. And they also discovered something interesting, a microlith stone tools, uh, which the style of actually predates any similar finds in England. So it actually shows that this style of microlith, which is very small stone tool, uh, may have originated here rather than in England. And as I said, this site at Cramond was the oldest site discovered until the one in Eckline Fields that we spoke about at the beginning here. So those were semi-permanent camps, but the earliest stone structures are probably the three hearths found at Jura, which date to around 6000 BCE. I couldn't find an, a picture of this exactly, but this was described as being a structure consisting of three stone rings at Lusa Woods on the Jura. So it is likely to have been uh, a type of fire of type of fireplace. So here's a here's a picture of a similar site. So now we can move from the Mesolithic period to the Neolithic period. The type of culture associated with the Mesolithic varies between areas, but it is associated with a decline in group hunting of large animals in favor of a broader hunter-gatherer way of life and the development of more sophisticated and typically smaller lithic tools and weapons than the heavy chipped equivalents typical to the Paleolithic. 
Depending on the region, some use of pottery and textiles may be found in sites allocated to the Mesolithic, but generally indications of agriculture are taken as, mark markings into, as marking transition into the Neolithic. The more permanent settlements tend to be close to the sea or inland waters, offering a good supply of food. Mesolithic societies are not seen as very complex, and bur burials are fairly simple. In contrast, grandiose burial mounds are a mark of the Neolithic. One of the best sites is Scar Bray on West Mainland Orkney. Here we find chambered cairn tombs from around 3500 BCE. This site at Scar Bray is considered North Europe's most complete Neolithic village. This site has a lot of interesting stories surrounding it. Uh, this starts right at the very beginning from its discovery, which occurred uh, after a storm in 1850 pushed the dirt and sand off of it and and um, displayed the site to people for the first time since it had been abandoned and or originally buried by the sands. So the builders of Scar Bray constructed their homes from flagstones and layered them into the earth for support. They filled the space between the walls with earth with mittens for natural insulation. Every piece of furniture in the home uh, is made from stone. The hearths indicate that the stone that the homes were warmed with fire uh, and that they originally would have had a roof it looks like a turf roof this is a, somewhat of an interesting fact because wood is scarce in the area at least it seems that that it is now and it would have been at the time so we're not really sure what they would have been burning on the hearth but it's clear that something was burned there so that's one of many many mysteries that we have here at Scarbray Scarbray is famous for all of the very interesting artifacts that have been uncovered at this site. Uh, as we spoke earlier about the Neolithic grooved ware, uh, this is a style of pottery which produced vessels with flat bottoms, straight sides, and was decorated with grooves. Uh, this is indigenous, an indigenous style to the Orkneys. And this style of ceramic has led to the designation of the inhabitants of Scarbray as grooved ware people. And as we said, there's uh, it's been found um, some around at other other sites, uh, such as such as the the field at Ecoline that we were talking about earlier, but more famously at Mei Shao. Uh, the grooved ware people were cattle and sheep farmers. Uh, and we also have evidence that they hunted and, and fished as well, and of course, ate hazelnuts. Discovered at the site were crafted tools, gaming, what we believe to be gaming dice, jewelry, uh, ornaments made of bone, precious rock, and just stone, of course. They made everything from stone. There were so many artifacts found here, especially knives in, and scrapers in various uh, levels of manufacture that it's speculated that this was some kind of centralized area of production um, for s knives and scrapers. Uh, one of the most famous artifacts is probably the Budo. This is a vaguely humanoid figurine carved from a whalebone. When it was originally discovered, it was thought to be of Iron Age or Pictish origin, but from radiocarbon testing, they've actually uh, been able to date this to between 2900 2400 BCE so the figurine is about uh, four to f or five to four and a half thousand years old there are some other interesting objects that they found are these uh, carved mostly spherical stones uh, they have very intricate designs on them the purpose of these is absolutely unknown and there's quite a lot of theories uh, but honestly, like a lot of things here, uh, we just don't really know. The interesting thing about all of the artifacts that they found here, of all the thousands of things that they found here, uh, beyond the knives, they have no evidence of weaponry so or, or defenses. So it seems to have been a, a very stable society. A lot of people refer to Scarabray as the Neolithic Pompeii because the ruins are so well preserved by the sand but we don't really know uh, if these people actually left in a hurry uh, 
and in fact we obviously haven't found anyone buried alive there so they weren't trapped there um, but the but the ruins themselves are very very well preserved the many standing stone circles, cairns, and other megalithic monuments begin to appear in Scotland around 2000 BCE. The ones at Stennis on the mainland of Orkney date to about 3100 BCE. The original stone monument consisted of 12 upright stones positioned in a circle all surrounded by a shallow ditch. Most of the stones have fallen over the years and the ditch has been filled in, leaving just four stones, the tallest of which is about 17 feet high. The ditch was lower than the water table, so it would have been constantly filled with water. The ring of water may have been significant to the Neolithic people, perhaps a sacred separation of the ritual site from the outside world. Plants, plant remains found in the bottom of the ditch show that the stone circle was built in open grassland, and we have evidence of farming nearby. Aquatic plant remains also show that it contained standing water from the beginning. Archaeologists found that there was one entrance through the ditch or henge at the north of the circle. The circle had sockets for 11 standing stones. A twelfth socket was found to be only a shallow scoop in the ground, which implies that the stone was never actually erected. The most unusual and unexpected find of the excavation was the central stone setting, which looks like a giant hearth in a Neolithic house. The fill of the ditch contained grooved ware pottery and the bones of sheep and cattle, suggesting ritual feasting had taken place there. The bones of large dogs, or possibly even wolves, were also found, along with burnt bones of the human hand. Whether the bones were thrown there ritually or simply dumped is not known, but it seems that everything we find on these sites was placed for a reason. From the Early and Middle Bronze Age, 2200 to 1570 BCE, there is evidence of roundhouses of stone at, at Jarlhof on Shetland. At Jarlhof, we see evidence of occupation starting at 2700 BCE. After a relatively short period, an early Iron Age, Age village drew, grew up, partially built over the earlier Bronze Age settlement. The area has Bronze Age evidence, a number of houses with living space divided into distinctive cells formed by buttresses or piers, and a later Bronze Age smithy built around 800 BCE within one of the earlier houses. These houses were also round, with the cells built around our central hearth, but were more spacious inside as they didn't have thick stone buttresses. Most interestingly, after an apparent break in occupation, a brock was built on the site. What is left of it stands at a height of 2.4 meters. It would have been once a massive round stone tower with several floors. Brocks are a kind of indefinite term, but basically these are structures endemic to Scotland. They usually have a double wall, multiple levels, and are made of dried laid stones. Other buildings grew up around the brock, including a large aisled roundhouse and a byre or shelter for livestock. Jarlhof has a lot of other history attached to it as well, uh, later history, including a Viking settlement and a medieval manor. Another very distinctive place of occupation in Scotland is Cranogs, or uh, ran houses that are partially or entirely built on artificial islands. Usually they're constructed in lakes, rivers, and estuarine rivers, uh, such as this is the Cranog in Perthshire. This is a reproduction. They are not found only in Scotland. They are associated with Celtic culture in whole, but they appear in Scotland as far back as 5,000 years ago and were in fact kept up in some instances well into the 17th century. The Perthshire Cranog is timber-built roundhouse supported on piles or stilts driven into the loch bed. It is more in more barren environments. Lots of rock were piled onto the onto the lake bed or loch bed to make an island on which to build a stone house. Today, the Cranogs appear as tree-covered islands or remain hidden as submerged stony mounds. But several hundred have been discovered in Scotland so far, although only few have been investigated. So, with these Cranogs, which were occupied until almost into contemporary times. 
We move out of prehistory into recorded history, which begins with the Roman Empire entering the, er the geographical area of Scotland in the first century. This begins with Agricola in CE 79, who was governor of Britannia, sending a fleet to survey and map uh, what would become Scotland's coast. They were, of course, uh, referring to it to to it as Caledonia. So we will pick up our next episode there. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.